I think, I think um, the biggest thing you can do is have a good cash buffer in any, any property you buy. So pick your market so that you can have enough of a buffer that you don't worry if a tenant might damage something. You don't worry about your plumbing backing up. Um, you don't worry about any of that stuff because you've got cash flow to cover it. And every property in my portfolio is like that. Like they all produce enough cash flow that I've got money for absolutely anything that comes up uh, and, and, and then some. So, um, and if you take that approach, then you won't worry. So, so easier said than done in today's, in today's market, right? Cause if in Toronto, um, in Burlington, Hamilton, Brantford, it's getting harder and harder to find cash flowing rental properties because these are all those markets that are close enough to Toronto that you can, you know, you can drive and maybe commute in once a week if you have to, if your employer requires you to. So uh, they're all being forced up in, in costs. So how do you get started? I would look for markets that haven't yet felt, felt the increase. So if you picture dropping a rock in a pond and all the ripples flutter out, that was Toronto uh, from the beginning. Toronto went up first and then all the ripples spread and the cities closest to the center, the epicenter, they go up and then it, it trails off. Uh, right. So markets that you might, you might have to look two hours from Toronto. You might have to look three hours from Toronto. I've heard some great stories of people uh, picking a market like Timmins or North Bay or Sudbury. Uh, those are markets that haven't yet seen the full effect of, um, of what we're seeing change in the marketplace today. Um, and that's not, you know, it's not just immigration uh, that's been affecting it. It's been that inflation topic. It's been so many things. I, I see it because I have a construction company building materials, like crazy increases in building materials, 30, 40% right. over the course of three to four years. So we're, you know, we're talking 10% a year increases in cost. Um, try and get ahead of that. Like there's a huge opportunity here to get ahead of that. Like pick markets, be intentional about the market you pick. I know a guy, um, Austin Ye came on my podcast, Toronto mm. guy, he yep. decided I need to go to Windsor. So he went to Windsor and he gets his cash flow in Windsor. That is a long drive. I don't want to do that drive. But right. he made, in my opinion, the right decision by picking a market that the cash flow worked for him. Same uh, with Sav Almeida. Also went to Windsor and Detroit to do his business of flipping and investing. He wanted to go to, um, he wanted to go to a market that, that would give him the cash flow he wanted. Um, right. So I think it's being intentional about, about your market. I do see opportunities in the Golden Horseshoe. I think that you can still look in areas like Welland, uh, Port Colborne, Fort Erie. Um, there's still cash flow potential. And then once you have that cash flow, you're not going to worry if you get a call from the plumber. Like for instance, I've had every year for the last three years, one of my properties, the cash flow is like $1,200 a month. I've had a backup of water or the furnace leaked or something. And I had to rip out the floor once a year at the same time of year, September for the last three years. And it just happened to me again. And, and it was a different thing each time, sort of the same thing this time that happened right. before. But I would be pulling my hair out if, if I was losing money here. And I've had that happen in the past. I've had cash negative properties that I keep paying and they, things keep coming up. And I, I, was, I was out. I, I like literally said, I'm not investing in real estate anymore uh, right. because I structured my life in a way that, that set myself up to fail. Uh, but if you set yourself up to succeed, even when that bad stuff happens, you still run your business carefully, but you won't worry about it as much because you've got a buffer. You've got the money there. And, and same token, build your account up or even structure your deal. If you have a JV partner or if you just got some extra cash, put $10,000 in an account just for what ifs. This is your what if account. That $10,000 could be the most valuable thing you ever did because it buys you your sleep. It allows you to sleep at night yeah. uh, so you don't have to be worried all the time. And that was one of the biggest things I ever did. I said, I'm not taking a cent out of any account until it's more than 10. Uh, now I, I do 15. I, I, I want to keep my accounts right up to 15,000 for per property. Right. Listen, everything that you just said is so simple and makes so much sense. However, this is years and years of experience and mistakes. And yeah. so everybody that's listening... I think in that last three or four minutes that you were talking, you must have said cash flow like I don't even know, maybe 20 times. Okay, so Andrew's trying to tell you guys cash flow is yeah. king. Pay and attention to that. Don't change your criteria because you can't find the right deal. I can't count how exactly. many times I say people do this. They yeah. can't find the deal. Like they set out for cash flow, can't find cash flow. Andrew, I found this. I'm like, that doesn't cash flow. How are you, exactly. you going to recycle your money? How, how are you going to be able to refinance that and you know, pull money out and grow? Oh, well, I can't find anything that does that. No, don't change your criteria just because you can't find a deal. You might need to change your market. You might need right. to change the location. But changing your criteria, generally speaking, if your criteria was well, well formed, is a mistake. 
right? There's a great saying by Jim Rohn. He goes, uh, ants think um, winter all summer and think a summer all winter. I mean, that you always got to be planning for what if something goes wrong? What if it goes down and not up anymore? And so you always got to be thinking of, you know, where things could potentially go wrong, right? It, it, you, know, you know, when you look at the market and where things have been since, you know, 2008, it's just been like, you could have picked almost any home in the last 20 years and, and you would have killed it. Look like a genius, you know? right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that almost nobody is thinking uh, summer when it's winter and winter when it's summer? Everybody's just thinking that deal, that first deal. Um, right. Yeah, I just spoke with a, a potential coaching client today and he's like, well, I'm about to buy this, this new one. You know, it might make $400 cash flow. I got to put $200,000 down. I'm like, okay, so if you put that $200,000 down, what else do you have to invest? Oh, nothing. I'm like, how's that going to yeah. get you to your goal? And, right. and you know, oh, well, wait a minute. <laughs> like, right. don't, don't change your criteria. And first off, listen to your criteria. You set it for a reason. You know, before you start investing, what are you trying to accomplish? What's your short-term goal? What's your long-term goal? Like if your goal is to retire one day, well, you can probably put your name on five or six properties that cash flow and just pay them down and you can retire very abundantly uh, in 30 exactly. years time. But if your goal is to quit your job and, and, you know, do it all now, well, you're going to have to, you know, implement a very aggressive strategy, including maybe Burr or, uh, you know, flipping properties or a combination, um, which is sort of the path I've gone down combined with my real estate investing. Um, right. you know, you have to make sense of your strategy and, and, and pick your properties, pick your market based on what it is you're trying to accomplish.